Um, my name's Anna Osofsky, and I'll tell you a little bit more in a few minutes. Before I start with my talk, I'd like to thank Pike on Ireland and their financial aid program. It's actually because of, because of this program that I can stand here and talk to you today, so thanks a lot for that. I'm here today to present my talk, Django Tales, and how the Django community can change lives. And I'm going to share eight stories with you of eight amazing women whose lives were changed by getting involved in the Python and Django communities. I'll also talk a little bit more about Django Girls and how you can help Django Girls at the end of my talk. Uh, now, those of you who haven't read any Django stories yet, I'd highly encourage you to do so. Just go to blog.djangogirls.org. I feature one woman each week. I put up a new story each Monday. And some of you may wonder, like, why this interview series? What's even the point of this? So we started this interview series to show that there are a lot of awesome women out there who work with Python and Django. And we also wanted to motivate and encourage more women to start programming by showing that there are so many different ways which can lead you to a career in programming. You don't necessarily need a computer science degree. You don't need a boyfriend who's a programmer. You can start now. Well, you're laughing but that's a common stereotype. Um, you can start now and learn and be great in it. These are all the women we featured so far. If I counted correctly, there are 70 of them. And there are a lot more awesome interviews to come. And we actually started this interview series in September 2014. So last month was the Django Story birthday, which I think it's pretty cool that we've been doing it for a year. Okay, let's start with the individual Django stories. Please keep in mind that I just picked out eight. There are so many more. So if after this talk you feel inspired, please visit blog.djangogirls.org, and there you can find all the other ones. So this is my friend Dory. Um, and Dory was an attendee of the very first Django Girls workshop in Berlin over a year ago. And she was one of the first Django Girls who scored a job as a developer after attending a Django Girls workshop. Dory studied psychology and philosophy in Budapest. And after finishing her bachelor's degree, she didn't really know what she wanted to do with her life. But she was kind of interested in digital humanities. So one of her friends pointed her to a, to a learning website. And she started teaching herself how to code. Um, afterwards, Dory applied for the Rails Girls Summer of Code, but she unfortunately didn't get in. But she got into the Django Girls workshop last year, and she said that experience changed her life. She then started speaking about Django Girls at a local meetup and was offered an interview and scored her first coding job. This is what she wrote on Twitter after signing her contract. Dory has now been working at the company for almost a year. It'll be her year next month. She organized two Django Girls Budapest workshops, the third one's in the making, and she, she attended many programming conferences. She came to Pike on Ireland last year, if I remember correctly. And she's very active in the Budapest Python community. And Dory um, was the first Django girl to attend a workshop, code at, coach at a workshop, and organize a workshop. And she has coached at four workshops so far. So this is one example of how Django girls and the Django and Python communities can totally transform someone's lives and turn um, workshop attendees into developers and new female leaders. The next story is my friend Kinga's story. Kinga's from Krakow in Poland, but she moved to Edinburgh last month where she studies computer security and forensics. And Kinga's actually here today. Can you wave? So that's Kinga. Like Dory, I met Kinga at the very first Django Girls workshop in Berlin last year, and we became friends. We spent the week in Berlin together. Since then, we've organized workshops together. We traveled together like we traveled here together. We pretty much chat every day. And it's because of Django Girls that I can say that I met my two very best friends. So that's the power of community that Naomi mentioned in her talk this morning. Kinga organized two Django Girls workshops and she coached at five, which is why we call her a serial coach. And last month she organized a workshop in Krakow and her mom and her grandmother applied to get in. <laughs> Her grandma's over 70 years old, and she said her motivation to attend a Django Girls workshop was to show people that you're never too old to learn something new. I think that's really awesome. 
Sadly, she couldn't attend the workshop because she broke her arm and her leg, but she really, really wanted to, and I think it's the will that counts. And yes, I do believe we can call that one of Kinga's biggest successes when it comes to spreading the love of coding. Kinga also wrote a great article on how the glorification of software developers compromises tech companies. It was published in Model View Culture. Who of you know Model View Culture? A lot more of you should read Model View Culture. It's a great online tech publication, and if you're interested in writing for them, they actually pay contributors. So it's a really great publication. And you should read Kinga's article because the topic is really, really important. Okay, on to the next story. This is Adrian. I met Adrian through Twitter first, and then I met her at Pi Tennessee earlier this year, where we were both speakers. And as her picture might indicate, Adrian is a professional chef by training. About a year ago, Adrian started to teach herself coding, coding, and she started her blog called Coding with Knives, which you, which you should check out. It's really great. She shares vegan cooking recipes and also talks about her journey of learning how to code. And um, a few months ago, Adrian did something very brave. She quit her job at a local university where she worked in administration because she was really unhappy and wanted to concentrate on coding full time. And since then, she's been doing a ton of community work. She spoke at um, Django Con Cardiff um, this summer. She gave two talks there. She speaks at Pi Atlanta pretty regularly. She's the organizer of Pi Ladies Atlanta, and she organized Django Girls Atlanta last month. And Adrian wrote a great article about the Django Girls Atlanta event, which has a really great section about fundraising. So if you're interested in learning how to do fundraising correctly, please read her blog. And Adrian is also joining us for DjangoCon US 2016 as an organizer next year. And she's currently interviewing for her first coding job, which is really, really awesome. Next story is Andy's story. Andy's programming career started when she got discouraged by her dad to start a career in science. She first wanted to become a video game programmer, then she got into 3D animation, and at the end of her graphic design studies, she discovered the web and changed her major. And since then, she had a couple of job as a, jobs as a front-end developer, PHP web developer, and Python developer. And this year, Andy organized two amazing um, Django Girls workshops in Mexico, which were really, really successful. And by doing so, she discovered that the Django and Python community in Mexico is actually bigger than she would have thought. And at the same time, she also started teaching herself Django, and after only three months' experience of teaching herself Django through tutorials, she scored a job as a Django developer, which is pretty cool. At the Django birthday this year, Andy gave her first conference talk about the mysterious Python community in Mexico, and since then, with the help from someone from the Django community, she scored a job as a Django developer in Salt Lake City, Utah, where she moved this summer. So I think it's safe to say that Andy proved her father wrong when he said that she shouldn't start a career in science. Next, I'd like to share Erica's story with you. Erica was one of the coaches at the first Django Girls event in Berlin last year, and Erica lives in Slovenia, and her story is really interesting. She first went to beauty school and became a hairdresser. And after working in this job for a while, she discovered it wasn't for her, so she went on to working in sales, which she didn't like either. And then she went on to working in social work for a project that helped young drug addicts find their way back into society. And during that project, she always tried to encourage people to adopt the mindset of, I want to do, fill in the blank with what you wish to do in life, and I'm willing to work hard to get there. So at one point, she started to practice what she preached, and she, at, she enrolled back in school. She had to finish two degrees before, at the age of 27, she started college and enrolled in computer science. And at the end of her studies, she got a job working for a company who worked with Django. Erica is now very active in the Django Girls community. She also is involved in a local coding group called Code Cats and she volunteers for the, for the Code Week Europe initiative. So I think that Erica's story shows if you work hard, you can do what you always wanted to do in life. Now onto Sylvie's story. Sylvie's story was published on Monday, so 
I would highly encourage you to read it. I'm just going to give you the short version here. Sylvia is an economist by training, and she worked in the field for eight years. But her family actually has a strong tech background, so when she was a teenager, she, she started teaching herself coding in DOS. At one point, she noticed that she really wasn't happy with her job anymore and started to burn out. And she said what she was really missing is working in IT. So one of her friends pointed her to the Django Girls Budapest workshop last December that Dory and I were organizing, and she applied and got in. And she said that's, always, that's what she always wanted to do in life. So each day, after spending eight to 10 hours in the office, she would come home and work through Python and Django tutorials. And through the encouragement of her friend, she quit, a job, quit her job a couple of months later and decided to concentrate on coding full time. Sylvie says that since Django Girl, she hasn't only become a programmer, because, but she's also become strong and brave too. Sylvie is now um, involved in the Django Girls Budapest organization, and she's also very active in the local coding community and organizes Django Con Europe, which will be held in Budapest next year. And a few weeks ago, she was offered her first job as a Python developer, which I think is really awesome. Sylvie told me she's coming to Dublin in March, and um, she would love to meet some local Pythonistas. So please tweet Sylvie and introduce yourself. And now onto the newest Django girl, Jordan. Jordan works in social media, but she says her dream has always been to become a Disney princess. That's what Jordan says. She said she just modified it from wearing a crown to wearing a suit, and she hopes to work on the corporate side of Disney one day. Three months ago, Jordan attended the Django birthday party, the 10-year birthday party, which was held in Lawrence, Kansas, and she said it changed her life. That was the first time she discovered that coding was more than changing some numbers and letters in HTML code to make some box appear. She discovered that coding um, offered endless possibilities. And Jordan's now working through Hello Web App by Tracy Osborne and learning HTML and CSS along the way, and she wants to build a Disney character search website. By the way, Hello Web App is a really good book if you're interested in getting into Django. It's by Tracy Osborne, and she's currently working on the second edition. So if you're interested in Django, it's a great read, and you can also support Tracy. Um, I'm pretty sure that as motivated as Jordan is, she will score a job as a Django developer one day. And what's pretty cool is that Jordan lives in Lawrence, Kansas, and she used to work for the jo Lawrence Journal World for three years. That's where Django was born. So she said her discovering Django must have been fate. Okay. At the beginning of my talk, I said I'll tell you a little bit more about myself later. So after sharing all these stories of other women, I think it's time to share a short version of my own Django story. I got my bachelor's degree in English and Catholic theology. A lot of you may think, oh my god, that's what people usually tell me. And afterwards, I didn't really know what to do or what to get my master's degree in. But I had a friend who was a Python developer, and he was always very enthusiastic about Python. So one evening, I asked him, do you think I can learn how to code? And he said, sure, everyone can learn how to code. And he gave me the link to the Code Academy Python tutorial, and that's how my story started. And I just want you to remember that it's so important to encourage people. Had he said, no, you, you're too stupid to learn coding, you can't learn how to code, then I won't stand here, wouldn't stand here today. So encourage people, help them, help others succeed. Um, to my family and me, my talents were always in languages, not really in science. I always liked math, I liked problem solving, but I wasn't as great in it as I was in languages. So I actually never thought that I could learn how to code until I discovered that learning Python is pretty similar to learning a new language. So I decided to give it a shot. I went to PyCon last year, which was my first coding conference, and I went to Europe Python last year where I attended the Django Girls workshop. And this picture shows me with my group and coach at the Django Girls workshop. And Eva, who was in my group, is actually sitting over there. Over there, I haven't seen her since the workshop, so this is our little reunion today. Um, 
Attending the Django Girls workshop was honestly one of the best and life-changing events that happened to me. Not only did I learn how to build a website, I learned that I'm able to do so many more things than I thought I could do. Like, Django Girls is one of the reasons I'm standing here. I never thought that I could talk in front of people, as it turns out I can. I never thought that I would have something meaningful to say, as it turns out other people think I do. And Django Girls gave me the support and confidence to do this. In February, I gave my first talk at Pi Tennessee. I gave another talk at DjangoCon US a couple of weeks ago. I organized two Django Girls workshops. I run the interview series. Um, I'm involved with DjangoCon US. I'm the DSF Grants Committee Chair. I'm, um, I'm a director of the Python Software Foundation. I founded the Pi Ladies Remote Group, and I work as a community manager for Aldarian and the Penix Project. And I know that's a long list, but I'm not telling you this to brag about myself. I'm telling you this because all of that would have not happened had it not been for the Python and Django communities and so many awesome people of you who are encouraged and helped me. My family doesn't really understand what I'm doing to them. It's something with computers, but that's pretty much all they understand. So it really means a lot to me to have such a supportive community who has my back. And like Naomi said, I'm one of these people who came for the language but stayed for the community. So to me, all of these women I told you about are superstars, and I find their stories to be so inspiring. And some of them may sound like fairy tales, but there was actually a lot of hard work involved in all of them. And I think these sto stories show that Python and the, and that the Python and Django communities can definitely change lives and have changed lives, including my own. So in order to bring you more awesome stories and to keep our interview series going, we need your help. There are really only two requirements you have to fulfill to participate. You have to be a woman and you have to work with Django in any way. It doesn't matter if you work with it professionally or if you just use it for home projects. We want to read your story. Sometimes I get answers from women like, I don't have an interesting story to tell, I'm not inspiring. That's not true. Everyone has an inspiring story to tell. So please don't be shy and email us at story at djangogirls.org and reach out to us. Actually, it took me almost a year to conv convince Kinga to do a Django story, but she finally agreed to write hers, which will be published shortly. Finally, I'd like to encourage you to organize a Django Girls workshop in your city or coach at a Django Girls workshop in your city. Um, if that's something you like to do, me or Kinga would be happy to chat with you about it after the talk. I promise it's really, really fun and rewarding. And just to give you a little example of what Django Girls has done for the Python and Django communities in a year, I'd like to show you this. This was Django Girls in July 2014. We had the very first workshop in Berlin and a second workshop in Brisbane, Australia. And this was Django Girls in May 2015. So as you can see, there are a lot more workshops. But you know, there's still plenty of space left on the map. So I can only encourage you to organize the workshop yourself. Here are some statistics for you. They constantly change. I just took them from the website today. So we had 38 upcoming events, 76 past events, over 8,000 applicants, 2,300 attendees in 48 countries. Django Girls has been really, really successful, but in order to keep on going, they really, really need your help. And if you don't want to or you don't have the time to organize a workshop, there's something else you can do. You can be a mentor, not just for Django Girls, but in general. This is Baptiste explaining something to Kinga during the Django Sprints at PyCon this year. And Baptiste holds the record when it comes to coaching at Django Girls events, and he's also an awesome mentor. I believe it's every expert's obligation to share their knowledge and to help beginners. All of us started out as beginners, and if it wasn't for the people helping us and showing us stuff when we started out, we probably wouldn't be where we are today. So let's start giving back. Volunteer your time for mentoring others. Help others succeed. I promise it's not only super rewarding, you'll also gain great teaching skills. I'll give you an example. My friend Ian lives in Wisconsin, I live in Germany, so there's a seven hour time difference between us. And every Wednesday he gets up an hour earlier for me so we can pair program. 
before he has to start working. Whenever I have a question, I can email him, I can ping him on Slack. He probably explained decorators to me five times in five different contexts, and he's always happy to explain it to me again. And I'll give you a little tip. The first step to being a good mentor is to ask how you can help. Don't assume that you know, just ask. Don't assume that someone knows concept X or Y, just ask them, do you know this and this? Not only will it make your life easier, it will also make the other person feel a whole lot more comfortable. I gave a longer version of this talk at DjangoCon US a few weeks ago, and my longer version, I also talk about how you can make, how we can make our community better. I don't have time to talk about this today, but if you're interested, you can just go to bit.ly slash Django Tales long version, or you can type in Anna Osowski Django Tales into YouTube, it was recorded, and you can watch it there. That's all I have for you today. By the way, I brought some Django Girl stickers, so if someone wants one, you please find me after my talk, okay? Thank you so much for listening, and I just want to thank all the people in the Python and Django communities who helped me and who are helping others. You're all awesome.